With the BMAT exam, you cannot apply strategically with the scores that you have obtained from the BMAT because the UCAS closes in October. You write the BMAT in November. So the GAMSAT, guys, is one of the longest exams I've ever written in my whole life. Literally, it's like five and a half hours long with only one break between section two and section three. As for the UCAT exam, that exam, I did not take it. I booked for it, I paid for it, I was about to take it, but while practicing these questions, I could just not hack it. The UK exams is a vile, vile, vile exam. I mean, like, what is this? What is this? Problem in our defeating. Make it tidy and joy. Make it dance like welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well thank you so much for joining me once again back onto my channel my name is belinda and if you've not already subscribed please don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as turn on your notification bell so that you get a notification every time i upload if you are new to my channel hi my name is belinda i'm a registered nurse in the uk i've also recently gotten my unconditional offer for graduate entry medicine here in the uk so today guys as you read from the title of this video i'm again back with another the journey to medicine application video so in this specific video guys i'm just going to briefly touch on the three uh, medical schools admissions tests that we have here in the uk i'm also going to talk to you guys about my bmat and gamsat experience which exam i think is better and why i am also going to talk about my scores for each gamsat and bmat briefly i'm also going to talk to you guys about what each exam consists of okay i'm also going to tell you guys in this specific video as to why i personally did not take the ucat exam so so that is everything i'm going to talk to you guys about in this specific video so if you are interested guys then please keep on watching so First things first, let's talk about the medical school entrance exams that we have here in the UK. In the UK, we've got three medical school entrance exams. We've got the UK CAT, we've got the BMAT, as well as the GAMSAT, which is tailored for graduate entry medicine. So depending on the type of medical school entrance exam you are going to take is depending on which medical school you plan to apply to, okay? So for instance, with me, I did not set the UCAT exam, hence I would not apply to any UCAT universities. So I'm only going to be applying to BMAT and GAMSAT universities because I did set both GAMSAT as well as BMAT exams. So next guys, I'm just going to basically break down the three kinds of exams for you. So the first medical school entrance exam is the UCAT, which stands for University uh, Clinical Aptitude Test, UCAT. Yeah. So with the UCAT, I happen to believe that it is the most common medical school entrance exam in the UK. There is more medical schools requiring you to set the UCAT than there is for the GAMSAT or the BMAT. So needless to say that if you had to set the UCAT exam and you do well in the UCAT exam, you stand a higher chance of getting accepted into medical school because majority of the medical schools in the UK require you to set the UCAT exam, if that makes any right. sense. So one of the advantages of writing the UCAT is that you would get your results prior to actually applying for medical school. Okay. So you would set the exam earlier on before you actually apply to medical school So that way you can apply strategically in accordance to your school So overall the UCAT consists of five sections and it is a two-hour exam So with the UCAT it is mainly practicing the UCAT is a medical entrance exam that requires you to practice 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 The one thing that I could personally say I did not like about the UCAT exam is the time pressure um, with the UCAT exam, you don't really have enough time to actually sit down and think you need to answer quickly. But with the UCAT, it's mostly like multiple choices. There is no essays in the UCAT exam. It's just basically multiple choice questions. The UCAT basically has a section called the abstract reasoning, okay? And that's just one of the five sections. And that section consists of solving problems, of patterns. I mean, like, what is this? What is this? And you've got like 50 questions, I believe, and you've got 12 minutes to answer those questions. So if you take 50 and you divide it by two, it would roughly give you about 4.1 seconds to actually answer a question. So like I said initially at the beginning of this video, I was going to set the UCAT exam, but I just could not hack it. The UCAT exam is a vile, vile, vile exam in my personal opinion, guys. I could not hack it because it was too quick for me. It was too fast paced, okay? And I felt like it didn't matter how long I practiced um, it was just not something that I could hack the UCAT exam is not an exam that you can actually say I'm studying for it it is mostly like a practice exam you need to practice consistently and you don't need to just practice to understand the format of the exam but you need to practice to make sure that you are working under time 
okay everything with the UCAT is related to time you can't waste time so with me like I said I booked the exam I kept moving it forward and kept moving it forward eventually I reached the point where I'm like you know what Belinda the UCAT is simply not for you and you know what that's fine so when it comes to the UCAT exam I can't really give any sort of tips and advice in regards to how to study under time pressure because once again personally I did not sit the exam okay you know so if you are a type of person who does well and you work well under time pressure by all means go and sit the UCAT exam now for me at that point in time I realized that you know what the time and the energy I'm using at practicing the UCAT practice exam I should focus on the BMAT so the BMAT is once again one of the three medical school entrance exam tests that we have in the UK which stands for the biomedical admissions test okay now for me personally the main reason I took the BMAT exam is mainly because I did the access course to medicine now with the access course to medicine that I did was down in Brighton College so I was already guaranteed an interview at Brighton Sussex Medical School now with Brighton Sussex Medical School for undergraduate medicine obviously requires you to sit the BMAT exam so that is one of the reasons as to why I sat the BMAT exam so with the BMAT exam I felt that it's something that you could actually sit down and study for and really prepare for it because there is a set specification on the BMAT website so like I said before prior to starting the access course to medicine the college um, had a crash course that they had over a three-day period and each day they would go through one section of the BMAT. So the BMAT is made up of three sections. So each day we would cover one section. So for me, for example, I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't have any GCSE science, chemistry or physics. So everything that has been discussed in the BMAT was all new to me because I literally had to start studying from the foundation, which is obviously chemistry, physics and biology. I had a bit with nursing, but chemistry and physics and also the mathematics that we did as well was a different type of mathematics like geometry as well as algebra so all of those subjects i really had to learn start learning them independently now the bmat exam consists of three sections section one guys would be like the aptitude test if i'm not mistaken which consists of problem solving questions so you've got one hour basically to solve those questions so section two is more of scientific knowledge so that's where you're studying and your knowledge of sciences so chemistry physics mathematics and biology comes into play so you need to know a bit of everything so you've got 30 minutes to answer scientific knowledge questions related to chemistry physics biology as well as mathematics okay so those are the four subjects that they're going to be asking you about in section two section three guys is a bit different section three of the BMAT exam is a writing task once again that's 30 minutes because 30 minutes 30 minutes and one hour equals to two hours overall the exam is two hours long so basically they're looking at the content if you are writing clearly are you writing an essay that's presenting an arguments for and against is your writing the type of writing that you're writing is it coherent so for me personally what I did when it came to the BMAT exam is I printed out past papers on the BMAT website on the set specification you are able to print out past papers so that way you can get a hold of the format so I looked at common questions so questions that came up more frequently over the years okay I looked at the type of questions so question styles and then with section 3 what I did is I set my timer half an hour wrote an essay and then got people to like proof read it just so that it made sense because sometimes when you are writing something it may not make sense to the person reading it so in regards to section 3 the writing task that's what I personally did now when it comes to the BMAT exam guys there is only one disadvantage to it the one disadvantage I found with the BMAT exam is that you are literally applying for medical school prior to your BMAT results coming out. So your deadline for UCAS would normally be around October. You normally sit the BMAT exam in November. So you don't really know what your BMAT results will be. So by the time the results come out, you have already applied through the UCAS and you have submitted to all the universities. The universities will then be waiting for your results. Your results will later be sent through to these various universities via the UCAS. And at that point in time, you don't know whether you did well or you didn't do well. So like I said at the beginning of this, video um writing the BMAT exam is almost like playing the lottery you can either get it or you can't get it you know what I'm saying so there's a 50 50 chance so that way you can't really apply strategically if that makes any sense so basically that's one of the risk factors so with the BMAT exam I didn't do that well okay however I still managed to get an interview at Brighton Sussex Medical School in regards to score um just bring out my phone so I can go back to my scholars 
So with section one, I got 4.3. Um, section two, I got 4.5. Um, section three for my writing task, I got a 3A. Okay, so not as good, but I like to believe I got average for my BMAT exam score. Now, the third exam, guys, and the last exam that I will be discussing would be the GAMSAT exam. Now, with the GAMSAT exam, it is a very long and intense exam. So the GAMSAT exam, guys, as it stands for graduate medical school admissions test so the GAMSAT is tailored normally for people who are applying for graduate entry medicine now the GAMSAT is one of the longest medical school exams I believe in the world please don't quote me on that I don't know if it's the GAMSAT or the MCAT so the MCAT is the medical school's admissions test in the the GAMSAT overall is five and a half hours long you get one hour break between section two and section three so with the GAMSAT guys, it's an all day exam. You will have to prepare to be there at the center all day long. So in order to get an interview with the GAMSAT, you would need to have at least a minimum of 50 in each section. Most universities require to have 50 in each section prior to being invited for an interview. Please do check the entry requirements from each universities because it may vary, okay? Especially if you are going to be sitting any of these medical school exams because some medical schools under the entry requirement will actually specify how much they actually require from you in order to even land an interview regardless of obtaining an admission. Now, let's get into the various sections of the GAMSAT exam. So the GAMSAT exam is also made up of three sections. I believe section one is reasoning in humanities and social sciences. So once again, this is a multiple choice question. So this section consists of basically 67 questions. Okay, multiple choice, 100 minutes, and it's about testing your knowledge and skills in regards to interpreting social and cultural ideas. So basically most of the multiple questions will be in forms of passages, okay? And then obviously you get asked the question and then you got to interpret it according to your own understanding. Section two is your written communication. So that's where you have to write two essays. So it is a bit longer this section. You are required to write two essays. You are given 65 minutes. So that 65 minutes, guys, you need to divide it by two and basically give yourself a half an hour for the first essay half an hour for the second essay that just makes sense so this section basically is tailored to assess your ability to be able to develop and produce your own ideas now the requirement for the first essay and the requirement for the second essay is a bit different so task a is an essay that requires you to write more on social cultural issues okay so you will be given obviously headings and you will have to choose from those headings what essay you're going to write whereas essay two of section two is an essay that is more personal so more like an individualized essay now my advice to anybody who is going to be studying for the gamsat exam in regards to this section you really need to read around read practice read practice read practice read around things know about things you know because the point is that you are going to bring out in your essay is very very important they are looking for strong points and then the last section of the gamsat which is section three is basically reasoning of biological and physical sciences funny enough this section guys is literally the longest section which is 150 minutes, 75 questions, I believe. Section three consists of physics, chemistry, biology, as well as mathematics. So that's the kind of topic you will be given in section three. So unlike the BMAT, the BMAT, I believe, was like 61 pounds and the GAMSAT was like 200 and something pounds. Now with the GAMSAT, you can take it twice a year. So for example, with me, the time I sat the GAMSAT exam, I was still completing my nursing degree. So by the time I actually applied for graduate entry medicine, I already knew what my score is. So I could apply strategically. So with the GAMSAT exam, guys, I did relatively well hence I received an unconditional offer from Nottingham um, University for graduate entry medicine and how they calculated it is some Gamsat universities will calculate and divide your score by four so the last section they will multiply it by two and then the overall score divided by four some universities divided by three now for me basically section one i got 61 section two i got 73 section three i got 65 percent overall they gave me 66.33 however if you round it off it will give you 66 so that just pushed me into my 75th percentile which is good we'll go with good okay now like i said if you took the exam in 2020 you can still apply using your gamsat score or your gamsat results in 2022 if that makes any sense and now many people were actually 
um, commenting in my previous video as to say, Belinda, why did you not apply for graduate entry medicine straight away without having to do the access course to medicine, right? And at that point in time, you know how sometimes you don't think that you would even get invited. So it's like self-doubting, you doubt yourself. So for me, doing the access course to medicine was like a plan B, it was like a backup plan in case the graduate entry medicine does not work. So I knew that if I didn't get through graduate entry medicine, the access course to medicine will definitely play a big role in regards to me getting my space in medical school, if that makes any sense. So that is the way I do things. I always try to have a plan A and a plan B so that when plan A doesn't work, you can fall back in plan B. It's just logical and it makes more sense. So the lesson here is to never doubt yourself. If you feel like you can apply to the graduate entry medicine, then go ahead and work hard for your graduate entry medicine exam and apply to that graduate entry medical school because you never know, okay? Like I said, I didn't anticipate for things to turn out this way, but they did and um, I'm not complaining. So guys, so guys, this brings me to the end of my video in regards to the different type of medical school entrance exams that we have in the UK and also discussing briefly my own personal experience as well as scores and results of my exams that I took specifically the GAMSAT as well as the BMAT. If you've got any more questions in regards to this video guys please don't forget to comment that down below. If you've got any other video suggestions you would like me to do comment that down below as well. But for now guys please don't forget to comment like and subscribe and I will hopefully 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 see you guys in my next video. Bye!